60% of those aged 50 and above in New York are likely or somewhat likely to leave this state. That's an incredible number. The corruption, as you know, we're dealing right now with a Moreland Commission scandal that the governor's wrapped up in and others. And this corruption has to end because the corruption colors and taints every decision made. You see what's happening in New York? A lot of it is pay to play. This is what's being investigated. But those decisions in Albany, when a few get the big breaks, who pays? Everyone. In worse business rules, because it's an unlevel playing field, higher taxes, that's what we're dealing with. And the proof that we are not doing well as a state is this, and how do you refute it? 400,000 people have left New York State in the last four years. If things were good, they wouldn't be leaving. They'd be staying here. If we had a bright future, cost of living were low, taxes were coming down, businesses were flourishing, things would be great, we would stay here. Because I, I don't know about you, but I'm born and raised in New York. This is the last place I want to leave. I love this state. And as I travel it more and more, you just see the diversity of this state. It's gorgeous, not just in its topography and geography, like here in the North Country, but with its people. And my god, this is New York. I mean, we should be number one in just about everything. We were at one point. How did we get this far down? Because conscious decisions were made to move us away from things that kept us very good. And that's where the business community has to come in. You need to speak out. And that's sort of my challenge. You need to speak out because your businesses are on the line. And so too are the elected officials who try to run a government as I do in Westchester. And yet it's like we're constantly shoveling the sand and the tide's washing it away. Because no matter how much cost controls, and we've done a lot, I mean, in order to drop the budget by 100 million net, that's several hundred millions in expenses we had to get back, pull back. Because left on its own, that budget would be over 2 billion right now. So we can do better, and you can do better as a business, as a region. I mean, it's all here. We're blessed. I mean, you've got water. You've got tourism, you've got infrastructure, you've got an international airport, you've got a border with a friendly nation, you've got a lot of great things here. So you need policies from Albany that's going to make it a lot easier to do business. And that's why we're running. So when I look at these, 92% oppose the use of taxpayer funds for political campaigns. Cuomo now supports that. Supports significant state mandate relief. Look, I supported the property tax cap. Very much. In fact, in my economic plan and jobs plan, which I hope you read online on robastriano.com, we have said, why do we have a sunset clause in this? This should be made permanent. But just like I said when he announced this, and I was almost disinvited because I said, I'm going to hold you to the second part of this promise, which is mandate relief. We have gotten no mandate relief. And any elected official, I don't care what party you were in, understands that. So it is becoming more and more difficult to do business on a local level or a county level, and it's going to get worse and worse. It's the same thing with our school districts. You know, through gap elimination, they were not given the tools to overcome the loss of aid. If you're going to take away the money, then give them the opportunity to at least control the costs. And we've seen none of that. The scaffold law, I mean, this is absolutely a no-brainer. And that's absolutely a part. It's driving up costs 25 percent for insurance. I mean, it's the same thing with the Wicks law. All these kind of unique to New York laws are just driving away businesses. Uh, natural gas. Let me talk about fracking. There is no reason, scientifically, there is no reason that we are not moving forward with natural gas exploration. Pure and simple, this is a political paralyzation by the governor, period. Because just the other day, the Energy Department came out and said there is not one instance, one documented case, same thing from the EPA, of water contamination from hydrofracking. Not one. So will we protect the aquifers and the water supply? Yes. In the unlikely event, we should have a buffer zone. No, no question about it. So let's take that argument off the table. Set it up the right way, but within 90 days of my administration, we're going to have rules, regulations, so communities that want to do this can move forward and do it. And look what, what would happen. The state with the lowest unemployment rate at 2.5% is North Dakota. The state now with six of the wealthiest 25 counties in America, North Dakota. 
not the weather. <laughs> it's natural gas and more oil. And what's happening in South Dakota, which has no oil or gas, they too have an unemployment rate of about two and a half, three percent. Part of it is because they can take advantage indirectly from hydrofracking. But the other part is they made an effort about 10, 15, 20 years ago to restructure their taxes. They're the banking industry of the world. People don't realize that. They have trillions of dollars in assets, more than New York, in banking because they changed the rules and regulations. And they've got companies coming in and doing business in South Dakota. We can do that. Startup New York is the biggest fantasy on TV. Now, you don't have to shake your heads. I don't expect you to do that. But I think you know I'm right on this one. We've spent $250 million in tax dollars on a fantasy campaign that all is great in New York. We're open for business. If we were open for business, why would we have a flock of people leaving every day? Why would we have businesses closing in record numbers in this state? An unemployment rate that is unacceptably high and lagging well behind the national average. Because it's exactly what's wrong with the policy in New York. The government should not be picking and choosing an industry and where they must locate, and that's it. And if they meet spe uh, specifications, then maybe they get a tax break. That's not how policy should be in place in this state. Because who am I to say who in Plattsburgh has the next great idea, and I hope to God that they started right here in Plattsburgh or anywhere else in New York that they choose. But they shouldn't have to worry whether they qualify for something. We should be opening our, our arms and saying, whatever you want to do, do it right here in New York. But objectively speaking, who really would do business in New York if you could move? And aside from a couple businesses that need brick and mortar, just about everybody now is mobile. So they're going to Texas. They're going to North Carolina and South Carolina. They're going to Florida. They're going to the, to the Dakotas. Because that's where the jobs are. That's where people can move to. And you see, young people leave. They don't necessarily come back because the opportunities aren't here. So we can make a huge difference. And my wife and I have three kids, an 11-year-old, a 9-year-old, and a 4-year-old, all three in public schools. They don't have a shot in hell in living in this state 20 years from now unless we make the choices today to do things differently. And I'm looking at these, and I'm sitting here saying, yes, 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 yes. I agree with you on just about everything here. But we need a governor and an Albany that agrees with you, too. Because right now, it's not. It's agreeing and aligning with New York City. And that is not going to help most of this state. So I just I wanted to say thank you for letting me come here. I do hope that you go to my website and look in. And I'll just give you a brief synopsis of our jobs plan. First of all, first of all if we have the highest taxes in America, I think we should go the other direction. We need to significantly reduce the taxes in this state. That includes the estate tax. It includes corporate taxes. It includes, more than anything, regulations. Everywhere I go, small businesses, big businesses, farmers, which of course are small businesses, all say the same thing. Gary alluded to it before. Get out of the way. You know, set up rules, but let us do our job. And I was talking to a farmer in one of the counties in Chenango, and he said, you know, this is third generation farm. All I want to do is be a farmer. He goes, but you know what I do all week? I deal with my accountant, my consultant, my lawyer, because a new agency from New York is coming in every other day. And that's what's happening. Who here is happy when you get a letter from New York State? <laughs> nobody, nobody. Or when an inspector shows up. That's great news, right? There goes your day. It doesn't have to be that way. And that's what we changed in Westchester. We worked with the Business Council, which is your version of the chamber, the County Association. We have multinational corporations in Westchester, PepsiCo, IBM. Their world headquarters are there, uh, many others. And we have a lot of small businesses. And the small businesses are really what keeps everything alive. And we worked with them. And the biggest things they said, taxes. And let's talk about some of the regulations. And not only did we work with them, but 30,000 new private sector jobs were created in Westchester in the last four years. We have one of the lowest unemployment rates. I don't take credit for all that. I, I don't, because we don't create the jobs. You do, and people like you. But we're setting the stage so jobs can be created. 
And that's what we need to do in New York. We've got to lower taxes in a real way. And this is what I stand for. Anyone doubts it, don't underestimate these 150 pounds. We got it done in Westchester with a Democratic legislature. We changed the entire conversation in Westchester when they said it couldn't be done because the people made a big change and they expected it. And that's why we got reelected by 13 points, same margin, in a higher turnout with Democrats sticking with us because we did what we said we would do. So we need to bring a balance back to this state. We're very much out of whack. We need to bring a healthy balance back to what we can afford and what we need to do or want to do.